I don't know about you, but personally, I've tried up to 100 milligrams of melatonin. And after doing this particular experiment, I came to the conclusion that melatonin supplementation above one milligram is in fact extremely detrimental to my mood, motivation, and energy. So if you're brand new to my channel, my name is Lucas, the founder of Boost Your Biology. And in today's video, what I'm gonna do is take a look at the dark side of melatonin supplementation. But before we get into the video, I really want to ask you guys to comment down below, have you ever used melatonin supplements before? What dosages have you used? And have you noticed any benefits or side effects? Please leave a comment down below. So let's take a look at melatonin. Well, what is melatonin? Well, melatonin is a hormone produced by the pineal gland, which is used by every cell in the body, which regulates the sleep-wake cycle. It optimizes sleep. It helps to defend against EMF radiation. It can assist with eyesight. It's a potent antioxidant. It supports the immune system. It supports cellular functioning, and it also protects many organs. So we can see that melatonin is produced by that pineal gland and we can see that it occurs or its secretion occurs uh, in a cyclical fashion. So we can see that peak secretion occurs later in the evening as it becomes dark, whereas melatonin uh, secretion and production is actually inhibited by light. So is melatonin the strongest antioxidant in the human body? Well, melatonin is more powerful in preventing cell death than vitamin E, glutathione, mannitol, and vitamin C. But does this mean you should be supplementing with melatonin? Let's have a closer look at some of the pleiotrophic effects of melatonin. We can see it has antiviral effects, very potent anti-inflammatory effects, and also very powerful antioxidative effects as well. So we can see that it increases SOD or superoxide dismutase activity. It can increase uh, reduced glutathione. It can increase SIRT1 activity, which decreases macrophage activity. It can increase angiotensin 1 to 7 activity, which increases vasodilation. It decreases angiotensin 2. And it also lowers key inflammatory cytokines, such as NF kappa B signaling, TLR4 activation, N. LPR3 activation, decreases INOS signaling, and also decreases COX-2 activation. Hey guys, if you're watching this video right now and want to unlock your full mental and physical potential, then the Limitless course is for you. Unlock my best biohacks for energy, motivation, and testosterone optimization so that you can conquer your goals with ease and crush every day with confidence. Click the link in the description and get it now for only $27 today. All right, now let's get straight back into the video. So what is melatonin used for nowadays? Well, the primary uses for melatonin include jet lag recovery. So we can see the primary use that are sleep related issues such as jet lag recovery, insomnia, and also poor sleep quality. Now, here are some of the secondary uses, and we're looking at megadoses, so above uh, one milligram. So we're looking at around 10 milligrams all the way up to 100 milligrams. Now, these secondary uses include optimizing the immune system, improving brain health, or acting as a highly potent neuroprotective agent, uh, also assisting with mitochondrial function, reducing cancer-related outcomes, fat loss by increasing brown fat, and also reducing inflammation. As we can see, the pleiotrophic effects of melatonin, again, the anti-inflammatory, antioxidative, immunomodulation, cardioprotection, neuroprotection, circadian rhythm uh, modulator, fixing sleep dysfunction, me uh, metabolism regulator, melanogenesis controller, anti-neoplastic properties, and anti-inflammatory action. So again, there are many benefits to melatonin that we need to be aware of. We can see the protective effects and the regulatory effects. And the big question comes down to this one here, the negative feedback loop. Does melatonin in small doses shut down the body's own production of this particular hormone? Just like we see with other hormones in the body, for example, taking testosterone will shut down your natural production but taking small to moderate doses of melatonin does not appear to reduce the body's own production of melatonin. So 300 micrograms to one milligram extended release tablets 
in my opinion, is something that I personally consider safe for regular use. Any higher than this, and some people generally develop easily reversible uh, addiction and dependence. So it's funny because you rarely hear about people who take melatonin in such low doses and then stopping abruptly reporting insane insomnia withdrawal effects. Um, so this is something I'd like to get hear from you guys down below in the comments section. Have you used melatonin uh, for an extensive period of time and then stopped abruptly? And then have you noticed a rebound insomnia effect? Leave a comment down below. So here are some of the negatives associated with melatonin supplements. The key point here is that melatonin administered in the afternoon decreases next day luteinizing hormone levels in men. So basically what this, is, uh, what this study is indicating is that melatonin can actually have a negative effect on male reproductive hormone secretion. And the authors noted that these data indicate that an evening melatonin administration decreases the next day luteinizing hormone secretion in normal adult males without altering testosterone levels or the endogenous nocturnal melatonin secretory pattern. So a reduction in luteinizing hormone secretion may have a suppressive effect on libido and sexual functioning, even though testosterone levels are unaltered. So anytime we mess with increase or decrease any of the hormones involved in the testosterone cascade, that can be anywhere from converting cholesterol to pregnenolone, pregnenolone down into progesterone, and then downstream into the other sex hormones. Anytime any supplement or herb or drug interferes with either DHEA, pregnenolone, prolactin, cortisol, estrogen, DHT, we're going to have a suppressive effect on our overall metabolic functioning. And so we need to be aware of these alterations and that may skew and affect how we function on a daily basis. Even though some studies suggest that, you know, melatonin here does not suppress testosterone production, it actually may have a negative effect on some parameters that may be similar to the effects that we see with uh, testosterone. So this is something we need to be aware of. Here's an anecdotal negative of melatonin supplements. This was a random Reddit thread. Healthy 22 year old male began taking 20 milligrams of melatonin about three months ago, experienced extreme and sudden libido decrease, stopped dosing immediately after experiencing decrease. That was over two months ago. Libido has not yet rebounded. Desperate, please help. The next one is this uh, Reddit user posted problems with melatonin. I've been taking five to 15 milligrams of melatonin a night the last month or two. Libido has gone down and I read that melatonin can suppress luteinizing hormone. I've also been waking up too early or in the middle of the night, which I don't like and having vivid dreams some nights, which I do like since I'm starting to train myself to lose a dream. This next Reddit user said, I was told to take it two hours before bed at 0.5 milligrams and do the usual sleep hygiene things like no screens, eating or exercise before bed. It put me to sleep, but I would wake up in, this, in the same level of tiredness, plus it reduced my libido, so I stopped taking it. So this study here outlines how melatonin administration can alter semen quality in healthy men. And interestingly, this study identified that there was a decline in seminal plasma and serum estradiol levels with an increase in testosterone to estrogen ratios. So this study is indicating that melatonin may have an inhibitory effect on the aromatase enzyme, which is the enzyme that converts testosterone into estrogen at the testicular level. So here are my practical applications for melatonin usage. First and foremost, minimal usage. We'd rather be synthesizing and producing our own melatonin production through the use of things like wearing blue light blocking glasses, um, consuming foods that boost melatonin. And so we wanna be minimizing our usage of this particular hormone. Number two, the other time in which melatonin is actually highly beneficial is following severe disease, sickness, or virus. Um, so since melatonin can modulate the immune system so dramatically, it is actually highly beneficial uh, during severe disease, sickness, or virus. Number three is jet lag recovery. So 
this is a pretty obvious one, but you know, following switching up in time zones, this is when melatonin supplementation can be highly useful is by recovering and renormalizing the circadian rhythm. And then fourth may be as if somebody has measured a deficiency via a Dutch test. So the Dutch test is a dried urinary comprehensive hormonal assessment. And so this is a way to objectively measure your melatonin production. Here's a really critical point to understand is when not to take melatonin supplements. So never use melatonin supplements after a night out. For example, coming home late after a party or an event, you've come home, let's say 12, 1, 2, 3 a.m. This is when you should not be using melatonin supplements. We should be opting for other sleep optimizing supplements, uh, other GABAergics in the later in the evening because we don't want to signal to the body that that 1 or 2 or 3 a.m. is the new desired bedtime. Because when you take melatonin, that's going to signal and start to train your body that that's your desired sleep time. So we want to be opting for other sleep inducing agents. So that pretty much wraps up today's video on melatonin. Have you used it? Drop a comment down below. Let's get a discussion going. Otherwise, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.